Hello friends, welcome to the second session of manual testing. In this video, we'll be discussing about a method of software development life cycle. So but before that, welcome to my channel again, code with me. So if you still not subscribe my channel, request to kindly go hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification so that you will never miss my new updates. In this video, we'll be discussing about one of the method of software development life cycle that is waterfall model. So, speaking about what is this waterfall model? Why do we use it in software development life cycle? What happens if we don't use waterfall model in software development life cycle? What is the main objective of this waterfall model? So, as per the definition, the waterfall model is a breakdown of project activities into a linear sequential phase where each phase depends on deliverables of the previous one and corresponding to a specialization of tasks. This approach is typically for a certain areas of engineering design. So friends, in order to have a better clarity of this waterfall model, friends, keep that in mind, waterfall model is nothing but a project is subdivided into a multiple sub modules. By doing that, what happens, friends, the complexity of this program will decrease. At the same time, the cost of the software development, uh, the cost of the software development life cycle can also be minimized, which can be planned, and also the time can also be reduced. By making use of waterfall model, you can save money and the budget of the project followed by the time. This is the main objective of the waterfall model that is used in software development life cycle. So if you want to put that all in one line, one line friends waterfall is nothing but an algorithm of a software project so waterfall model contains a six sub modules which the entire procedure of the software development life cycle takes place so if you want to know the what are the six sub modules or the six steps that waterfall waterfall model contains that makes the software even more easy rather than decreasing the increasing the complexity so Speaking about the waterfall model diagram. In this scenario, what happens? The first comes is requirement, requirement analysis. Okay, I'll be discussing the each module individually. So the second comes system design, followed by implementation, followed by testing, followed by deployment, and last but not least, that is maintenance. So friends, these are the six steps that waterfall model includes. The software development, uh, the software development life cycle, which implements implemented using a waterfall model is broken down into these six parts. What are those requirements? System design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. So friends, speaking about individual of the sub modules, let's usually come with the requirements. So friends, what is this requirement? So all possible requirements of the system are to be developed carefully in this space and documented in a requirement specification document. So friends, in order to have a better clarity of what this requirement phase of this waterfall model usually works. See friends, before you start a software project, all the software requirements and the, all the hardware requirements and the time management which has to be covered the software module and the budget planning, all the stuff is done using in this phase. So a requirement analysis phase is usually done that you can predict what level of output can be obtained as per the customer requirement with very less investments. That is the main phase of this requirement. The main importance of this requirement is to predict the output as per the customer expected with very less investments. That that planning is done in this first phase of the requirement analysis requirements. So the main objective of this requirement is to ensure that by investing a very less time, a very less budget and predicting a high definition output as per the customer requirement. This is the main objective of the requirements in the first phase of waterfall model. So speaking about second phase of the waterfall model that is system design. So friends, 
you know, the, the requirement specification from the first phase are studied in the phase and the system design is prepared. And the system design helps in specifying hardware and system requirements and helps in defining the overall system architecture. So speaking about here, friends, what happens exactly? So what happens? I'll make an example. I'll make a three to four, uh, three to four couple system designs by by predicting the outcomes. That means predicting the output. That if I make use of this design, this output will come. If I make use of this design, this output will come. So you have to ensure that by making use of this, by making use of specific requirements, it's obtained from the first phase of the waterfall model. So what are the possible things that can be predicted to me or to obtain the output, the system design and the, including the software and as well as the hardware and the specimen working on it just to be hired for certain amount of salary, either you're running a business or in your own business. So in this is what happens. The system, the basic software, hardware implementation is designed and the prediction will be calculated. So if I, example, if I make a plan A, so this this will be the budget, this will be the time, and this will be the output. If that if that plan A is not satisfied, we'll move to the plan B. For plan B, this is the budget, this is the time, and this is the output. If the plan B is not satisfied, we'll move to the plan C. So in system design, this kind of plans is developed. These plans is uh, will keep on jumping until and unless we find the appropriate system design, which make use of very minimum wages minimum time and high definition output as per the customer requirements this is the main objective of the system design difference so speaking about the third phase of the manual testing that is implementations so friends as per the word Michael only implements that in this way what happens the entire software and hardware procedure the work of this software is done all the internal coding, it may be hardware implementation, software implementations, and what what all the functionality that is has to be done, which has to predict the output, all kinds of needs, inputs, all kinds of outputs that is required, that is completely modulated in this phase, that is implementations. The implementation, nothing but anyway, I have got all all the system design and the requirements. In this phase, the usual start works. All kind of software work and hardware work everything is done and tested okay friends and tested what happens all this uh, with the basic uh, the basic requirements of software implementations hardware implementation every kind of work is done here and completely work is done and it is moved directly sent to the testing part so friends now going to the fourth phase of water model that is testing which can be also called as software testing in this case, what happens? All the units deployed in the implementation phase are integrated into a system of testing of each unit post integration. The entire system is tested for any faults and failures. So, what is testing, friends? As the name itself only uh, that is signifying, testing is nothing but that you test as a software. How do you test it? You have multiple methods in that. So, by we have multiple methods and multiple products until and unless we we find the zero faults and zero failure in the in the developed software by making use of all testing techniques until unless we found zero faults and zero failures the system the software is keep on testing so the first four is keep on repeating until when until we find the faults and the failures zero in the software that we have developed friends this is the phase of software testing so speaking about fifth phase of manual uh, waterfall model that is called as deployment of the system. Once the function and non-function testing is done, the product is deployed into the customer environment and released into the market. In the sense, friends, once all the software is ready, now it is digitized into a market. There may be a scenario occurs that you have to move to the customer place and inst initialize it, I mean install it. Or if you are going to marketize your product, it is your responsibility that to marketize the product that to reach the every hearts of the hunger people who is ready to learn. So that is the main objective of deployment of the system. Speaking to the last phase of waterfall model, that is nothing but maintenance. What is maintenance? See, 
there are some issues which come up in the client environment to fix those issues patch has to be released also to enhance the product some better versions are released maintenance done to deliver these changes in the customer environment. suppose friends you successfully created a project and you went to the customer and installed it few days what i go the customer facing some issues so what happens the customer immediately will call you i mean the call the developer which is who has developed or the maintenance department who has submitted the software and approach for the help so the maintenance department is to produce the exact solution to the customer which he has raised an issue for via phone or in the customer place so this is how waterfall model exactly works these are the base these are the basic six steps of waterfall model which has to be taken place Okay, friends, by making use by making use of this waterfall model, what happens? The complexity of the software development life cycle will really uh, decrease very rapidly. And the, another advantage of waterfall model is it's not time consuming, and most importantly, with with very less of minimum cost, the project will be done. That is the main advantage of waterfall model. So, friends, this is the session of this waterfall model ends here. If you have any doubts regarding this waterfall model, you have to kindly pin down your doubts in the comment section. I will definitely reply back. So, if you have any doubts regarding the manual test testing, put on the comments. And if you like this video, request you kindly please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much, friends. Have a nice day. Keep coding. Thank you.